In this video, I'm going to show you how to run the amazing DeepSeek R1 model all locally from your machine with NADN, Olama, and Docker. If those terms sound unfamiliar, don't worry about it. This is going to be a no-code solution. I'm going to walk you through step-by-step. Step. So regardless of your background, this will make sense to you. For those of you who are not familiar with DeepSeek R1, this is a newly released reasoning model that has caused a chaos in the AI world because of the fact that it's all open source and it's on par with the closed models like the OpenAI O1 model, which again is a fraction of the cost. So I'm going to go ahead and actually walk you through step by step how to use this in NADN in your workflows, because again, the reasoning models are incredible for complex workflows and things that require a lot of complex reasoning and research. So these models are amazing at doing all of that. All right. So the first thing we need to do is you need to head over to docker.com and download this desktop app. Again, this is super simple. You just head over here, click on download Docker desktop and choose your machine. Once you do that, the next step is you're going to head over to this link. Um, this is NADN self hosted AI starter kit. So once you come here, you will scroll down and I'll tell you exactly what you do. So depending on what machine you're using, if you have your own Nvidia GPUs, which a lot of people don't, um, so, but if you do that, then go ahead and follow this. But if you don't, if you're just running it on your Mac, which a lot of people have Mac, I have a Mac M4. I run it. It's very simple. It works very well. Uh, and so right here, you will go ahead and um, if you have Olama installed on your computer already, you can use this. But for those of you who are not familiar, obviously, you wouldn't have already installed it. So you will come right here. It says for ev everyone else. You're literally going to copy this. Go to your terminal, paste it. You're going to copy this one, which means CD self. You're going to CD into that folder and you're going to run this command. Again, same thing. Copy and paste. Don't worry about anything else. So again, first step, make sure you have Docker desktop installed. Second step, you'll come here and follow this uh, guide right here. Very, very simple. Even if you don't have no coding background, this will make sense. So once you have all of that, everything will be running. And if you come to your Docker desktop, so this is what it should look like. You should have four images, NADN, Olama, Quadrant, Postgres. Don't worry about Quadrant and Postgres. Again, I have done an actual step by step. So if you're um, uh, if you want to, if you're interested in checking that out, if you go to the community section and you go to the classroom section here, you're going to come to the setup uh, cloud host, self host and then and on the bottom here, the ultimate local AI setup. So this is where you can see a step by step. I walk you through how to do that to install quadrant and all of that good stuff. But anyway, so even if you don't watch that, this is fine. It will make sense to you. So after you do that, then your Docker desktop should so look something like this. We're not going to worry about the quadrant or the Postgres because we're only going to use these two. So once you have those four images, you're going to check, uh, uh, move over to your container. And here you should have basically, uh, the NADN and Olama, uh, um, running and then also the Postgres and quadrant. But like I said, we're not going to use Postgres or quadrant. We're just going to utilize these two. All right. So once you have that set up, what we need to do next is go over to our browser in this case uh, on your Chrome. And as you can see right here, it says running on localhost 5678, right? So I'm going to go head over here. It says localhost 5678. And as soon as you click on that, and we can see right here, mine's running. If this is your first time doing this, it's going to ask you to sign up for an account. Once you do that, then you can end up exactly right here. So now you have basically an NADN running locally on your machine and everything else also set up on your desktop app. So the next thing we need to do is the way we're going to use this locally on our machine is through Olama. If you're not familiar with Olama, Olama is basically a, a way to utilize and run all the um, open source models locally on your machine. There's several ways to do this. I'm using it via Docker because I've already installed Docker and Olama in my Docker through that AI starter kit. Again, you can run this models and download it on your machine from your terminal, but that requires coding. And like I said, I don't want to scare people with coding. So this is the best way and the easiest way to run it, regardless of your background, right? So once you head over to Olama.com, you don't even have to sign up or sign or anything like that because we don't need to do any of that. All you have to do is come to models and DeepSeek is the first one, obviously, because of the fact of how uh, trendy it has become. And you can see even on open router, DeepSeek R1, this still Llama 70B is the most popular model right now. But anyway, so you're going to come right here and click on DeepSeek R1. So these are all the different parameter models that are available. The largest being the 671 billion parameters. Please do not download the 671 billion parameter model. Do not run that on your computer, regardless of how good your computer is going to destroy it. Because again, this is a very heavy model that's not made for local machines, um, unless you have like an amazing 
amazingly powerful machine. But anyways, so what we're going to do is actually run the 1.5 billion and the 7 billion parameter models. Again, they have several uh, others. If you have a pretty powerful machine, you can even run the 70 billion parameters and that will be, uh, you know, pretty sufficient for basically majority of the works. And again, like I said, I've tested this before. It's amazing. It works great uh, with even the 7 billion parameters. So anyway, so this is what we're going to do. But the way to do this, I'm going to quickly actually show you how to do this. So we're going to now head back to our uh, NADN, so you're going to end up right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a chat trigger or an AI agent. I'm going to quickly show you why. Okay, so bear with me here. So I'm going to search for an AI agent and I'm going to have the chat trigger. That's fine. So if I click on chat model now, right? So if I click on chat model right here, so these are all the different options that open up that's available for me. Antropic, the open AIs of the world. But then right here, as you can see, Olama chat model. So we need to select this because this is where now we need to run our model through here. So if I now go inside and my credential already um, automatically uploads, but if you, if I go ahead and uh, inside this credential, as you can see right here, it says base URL Olama 11434. Now, the great thing about running this AI starter kit is you don't have to worry about putting your base URL, API key or whatever, because it's not. It's all being run through your local machine. Therefore, we don't need to have any kind of API connection to this, right? That's a great thing about uh, Olama is especially if you download this AI starter kit, as soon as you run this thing, it will automatically detect that. And all you have to do is just put this base url if it's not already there like i said if you've already run the base on um, the ai starter kit this will automatically will populate but if you haven't you're just literally going to put this and this 11434 this is just running on our local host that's that's all it means right but for those of you who are not familiar with how to run all these don't worry about it just like i said the only thing you need to know is the reason why i pointed that out is because i wanted to make sure you know that this is actually running locally on your machine and it's not reaching out to some third-party api because again the reason why local host is such a huge opportunity and such a and had such a, has such a big potential is because a lot of industries like the financial industry the health industry they are very sensitive about sharing data therefore and then is a great place for for you to build automation workflows because of the fact that you can use things like olama you can things use like quadrant and all of them are locally hosted meaning the client or the person who is sensitive about their data they can have the full privacy because of the fact that they can run this on their machine or in a cloud server right they have full control over it so that's why this is such a huge opportunity and that's why i think this DeepSeek R1, because of the fact that it's open source, has completely, you know, created a chaos in the market because now it's giving the people the potential to host everything locally and run everything locally with this amazingly powerful model. Again, that uh, 671 billion parameter model, the fact that it's local, it's incredible. But anyways, we're not going to run that, obviously. But the way we're going to, if you wanted to run the bigger model, it the process is the exact same way, right? So anyways, so once you do that, once you come inside your Olama chat model, hopefully your credentials um, have connected successfully. And the way to check that is just going to connection, test it successfully. This will show that there. Um, and then I'm going to come back in the model. So now if I just click on this, now I have all these models that are available to me. So these models, I had installed this a while back, but I'm going to actually go ahead and show you step by step how to install the DeepSeek in here. So that way, when we come back here, we should be able to select the DeepSeek here. As you can see right here, right now, the DeepSeek is not there, correct? So now I'm going to show you how to add the DeepSeek or any other model from Olama. So let's go ahead and switch back to our Olama here. So what we need to do is now right here. So these are the different models that you can select. I'm going to actually install the 1.5 billion parameter again, because I'm just doing this for test. I don't want to install the bigger uh, parameter models. So all I need to do is come to the model of my likings. So if you want to click on the 7B, you, you will see on the right hand side, this is it gets updated, right? So I'm going to click on the 1.5B. All you have to do is just come right here and copy this. Don't worry about copying the Olama run. You're just going to copy the name of the actual model, right? So I'm just going to come here, copy this. So DeepSeek R1 uh, colon 1.5B. I'm going to come back to my desktop app. And now on the container, I'm going to come here and click on Olama. Once I click on Olama, this is going to bring me to the log section. I need to head over to the exact sex execute section. So you're going to leave everything as it is, which is just hashtag Olama. All you have to do is type pull space and paste the name of the model. That's literally it, right? So if I enter this now, so now it should be able to pull that model from Olama. And then when we head back to our 
And then inside our Olama chat model, we will be able to now see this DeepSeq R1 colon 1.5 billion parameter inside our Olama chat model, which means that we'll be able to have access to it from our NADN instance. Okay, so make sure you wait for this to run. So this is going to pull all of that data. <coughs> Excuse me. So now it says success. We're good to go, right? So now we need to head back to our workflow. So if I go over to my NADN and if I just oops, refresh the page, refresh the page, I could just go inside my chat model again here. Make sure your credential is good. So now if I toggle, there you go. The first one, as you can see, DeepSeq R1 colon 1.5 billion, right? Very, very easy, very, very simple. And if I now select this model, I can actually now interact with this. So I'm going to go ahead and chat with this. I'm going to click on chat. So this is the ultimate uh, test for a reasoning model that uh, you just type how many R's R's are there in the word strawberry. You can test this if you run, if you type the same thing on an open AI, this, it, it wouldn't work. So I'm gonna enter, as you can see, it's running. Because it's running through your machine, and this is where if, if it's a bigger model, this is gonna be very, very slow. So that's what I'm saying. You wanna make sure that you have a machine that's capable of supporting a bigger model if you're downloading that, because of the fact that it is now using your machine's CPU, your machine's uh, local memory, and all of the resources from your machine to run everything, right? So there you go, as you can see. All right, perfect. So the way to know that if it's a reasoning model or not is because you will see the difference in, um, in the way it responds, right? So right here it says, okay, think, okay, so I need to figure out how many times the letter R appears in the word strawberry. Let me start by writing down the word, then go through each letter one by one, right? The word strawberry, wait, let me make sure that the correct, so blah, blah, blah. As you can see, it's, it's, it's actually working. This is the way you can tell that this is using a reasoning model because if it's using like a chat GPT or like a GPT-4 or mini or whatever, it will quickly just respond, uh, instead of like going through this step by step process of thinking, uh, and saying, wait, I'm confused because initially when I thought this, 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 right? So, uh, you can actually see that this is a re reasoning model. Again, this is only the 1.5 billion parameter model. You can actually run a bigger model in computers. So if you run like a 70 billion parameter, it's going to even take longer. So that's why I said, make sure you're running a model that's compatible with your machine. Otherwise, this is going to be very, very slow. All right. Well, hopefully that was helpful. Again, same thing. If you want to uh, run another model, if you want to download another model, it's going to be the same exact process. You're going to come and select the model. So let's say if you want to run the 7 billion or the 70 billion parameter model, You'll just come here, select, and actually copy and paste this uh, um, model name inside your Docker desktop on the execute area. You have to, again, same thing. You just put pull, name of the model, enter, and it's going to run everything. And when you come back next time on your workflow, you'll be able to um, access that from this drop down right here. Right? Very, very simple. And same thing if I now select like the Gemma 2 or whatever, it will be the same process. It's going to run. And on the right hand side, if you take a look at the log logs, so this is where you can see it's actually like when it was running that it shows the response. So you can actually see the reasoning that it's using and it's walking through step by step how it came out with the answer, right? So, well, anyways, hopefully this was a simple but a very powerful way for you to run everything and the deep seek R1 model all to your machine, all completely free, right? Because if you think about it, Olama is free and it is free. And now DeepSeek R1 is free because of the fact that these are all open source and um, everything is run locally. So that's, again, that's the power of open source models and open source platforms. And that's why, like I said, I am a huge fan and proponent of NADN and running workflows and everything through NADN because of the fact that it has these amazing uh, functional or these amazing qualities like the running everything locally because again if you're building this for a client or even for your own personal reason it's completely free right that's the beauty of open source and again if you're serious about learning and then and how to create amazing workflows make sure you join the community we have a great community it's full of people who are passionate about learning AI, learning NADN, and making great uh, automations for clients for personal use case. We have tech support calls. We have an amazing classroom section with deep dive topics, call recordings about live builds, 
about tech support and much, much more. So make sure you join the school community. I'm going to put the link in the description. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe because I got a lot of great content coming up that you don't want to miss. Thanks for watching again. I'll see you on the next one.